Good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are watching us from, across Ghana, across the continent of Africa. This is Leadership 360 on Metro TV Ghana, on DSTV channel 277. We are up here once again, pre-Christmas edition, and today we're going to continue our discourse on leadership strategy and change management for the betterment of our communities and the continent at large. As usual, your regular host, Dr. Victor Abe, it's my pleasure to welcome you. But before we continue or we commence the, the main conversation, let's take a quick message from our sponsors and we shall be right back. Looking for an excellent professional risk management and training solutions provider? Look no further. Your ultimate solution provider is here at V5 Solutions Limited. We support you with our professional skills in building capacity of your teams and managing all your operational risks. Our best both solutions include private and corporate security risk management and training, fraud investigation, occupational safety and health management and training, project monitoring, evaluation and research, supply of private security, logistics equipment. Our solutions are professionally delivered with in-depth focus on people, processes and procedures, the environment and ultra-modern technology. Contact us now on 303 95 and 053 or send us an email at info at v5solutionslimited.com for a partnership that strengthens a company for an excellent sustainable productivity and profitability. Visit our website at www.v5solutionslimited.com for more details. V5 Solutions Limited, your ultimate professional risk management and training hub. on my honor to be a better leader every day faithful and loyal to my country organization and fellow team members countrymen and women I pledge myself to remain true to the core values of integrity and self-discipline through my daily choices and actions my mind is alert focused at all times I shall show respect to everyone always and every time I remain a better leader and team player always. So I pledge. Welcome back from the quick break and the messages from our sponsors are very clear. We are so grateful for con their continuous support for this program. And our beautiful pledge is that all of us will continue to put ourselves out there for the betterment of our societies uh, at large. Today, we're going to have a discussion on the topic community development leadership. As said in my introduction, community development leadership is about courage, it's about creativity, it's about involvement of all community members to ensure sustainability of our communities. We cannot do it all. Today we have another special guest in-house in the person of someone who is well-versed in development consultancy or development work. He is a product of Tamale Secondary School. Last two weeks we brought Dr. 
Hawa here, also from Tamale Secondary School. We have another powerful product of Tamale Secondary School here on this program. He's also an alumnus of University of Ghana and a development consultant who has an NGO working in the communities within the northern sector of Ghana. His NGO is NOSAC and he is executive director. We are talking about Mr. Mohamed Awal Alassan. Mr. Alassan, you are welcome to Thank Leadership you very much, System. Uh, Doc. Uh, yeah. How is Tamale? Ah, Tamale is fine. Uh, the weather is, is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's quite dry. Yes, uh, the Hamatan has set in. Uh, so okay. uh, quite cold in the quite morning. Cold. Yes, yes, yes. And a bit dusty. Yeah. Okay. So the Hamatan is, uh, it has come. <laughs> All right. We are, we are grateful yeah. to have you mm -hmm. on the Leadership 360 program. I'm pleased to be here. All right. Mm -hmm. So, as I indicated, community development leadership, to set the tone for our conversation, let's quickly establish when we talk about community, what are we talking about? Well, thank you very much, uh, Doc, for the opportunity to discuss this. This okay. is a very important topic, really discussed, mm -hmm. but uh, it concerns all of us. When we talk about community, it's usually we just see that uh, well, you know, a group of people having common interests, common features, living together, mm -hmm. and hoping to improve their lives. So they live together, they believe they have some common features. Mm -hmm. They also hope to get, uh, what is it, better in their lives and then um, be able to use resources they have within the community to their advantage. Okay. So when we find people in that circle, then we see that these people, let's say, they have a community. A community. Okay. Yeah. And then if you look at a typical community and how we have uh, seen and experienced this in our life, almost all of us have come from communities. Mm -hmm. Some are rural communities, mm -hmm. urban communities, mm -hmm. peri-urban communities. Okay. So mostly we easily classify communities in terms of development and the history. Okay. Urban communities, mm -hmm. peri-urban communities, mm -hmm. and rural communities. Okay. And then uh, each type has some features that uh, will define the community. Okay. Whereas in urban communities, we have some social amenities, and mm -hmm. then the, the people are more, in most cases, are more enlightened. They have more, they have uh, access to some resources. They, um, they are more empowered and are able to define some basic concepts mm -hmm. for the rural, uh, for the urban uh, mm -hmm. setting. The peri-urban is actually in between the rural, rural and, and the, the urban. Okay. So most of these communities, we see that uh, in local uh, or everyday English, we just see that a development is now reaching them. Okay. You know. So the community is between, in between rural and then urban. So they have some facilities and they do, do not have many uh, okay. others that will make their life uh, comfortable. Okay. But for the rural areas, uh, most of it is... Uh, Really the communities that uh, sometimes hard to reach. There are times uh, that uh, they live in someone will say abject poverty. Okay. Then they um, they have difficulty accessing social amenities and uh, okay. all that. So most of these communities are what we classify as uh, okay. the rural communities. Uh, yeah. All right, Mr. Mohamed. So yeah. what I the, what the impulse I got from that is communities are divided into three. Basically, or classify uh, basically into uh, three yeah. urban, peri urban, mm. and rural. rural. But in all, a group of people with common interests to where and resources available to them to develop yeah. or with a need for development. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So now, having said that, meaning the definition has to do basically with resources available and exposure. Yeah, exposure is part of it. Mm -hmm. resources part of it mm -hmm. but also having that kind of common interest mm -hmm. because the common interest is what keep the people together okay so common interest here can you elaborate a bit and on we that? say common interest you know when people live together sometimes they build some norms and through that you can see them expressing certain values mm -hmm. 
the values may be culturally influenced, mm -hmm. religiously influenced, mm -hmm. or some other considerations like economic. Okay. So when they live over a period of time and then they build these values, they try to act to sort of consolidate mm -hmm. the kind of value that they have co created. Okay. Because they model those values. Values. And so they try to live and reflect okay. those, uh, those values. So by extension, can mm -hmm. we say, if we extend it continentally yeah. or globally, can we say Ghana is a community? Absolutely. You, you can't. Okay. The Ghanaian community. Okay. Either a Ghanaian community can mm -hmm. just be here, okay. or even outside, maybe Sorry. I'm in Nigeria and mm -hmm. I say I want to go to meet the Ghanaian community. community okay. But Ghana, yes, we see it as a nation, mm -hmm. but we can also say the Ghanaian community. Ghanaian community. And we'll be right because we have a number of things mm -hmm. that are keeping us together, together. as a country. Okay. I and just wanted we'll us to clarify Absolutely. the point that so yeah. that our viewers and yeah. listeners will appreciate when we say community, yeah. not necessarily yeah. the the, the, the three. Absolutely. But when you extend it globally, absolutely. it can also cover a whole country being described as a community. A community. Okay. I, absolutely. I, I think that, that I agree with you on okay. that. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. um, now, communities have common interests. Yeah. And those common interests must be promoted at all times. Okay. That brings to mind someone who can lead or that can facilitate that process. So, meaning there must be leadership in there. Yeah. So, when we talk about communities, leadership plays a role. What is your take on that? Uh, yes, so we talk about community, leadership plays a role. Yeah. But uh, we will get it right if we attach development to community. Okay. Before leadership comes Something. in to drive that. Okay. Because remember I said earlier on, there must be a common interest. Mm -hmm. And always uh, a community will want to see their life better, better. Off. So in so many sectors, socially, culturally, economically, mm -hmm. they will want to see better things happening to them. And they define that. Okay. There are some instances that outsiders try to define what is developing and what is better for communities. And when we go on that tangent, we get things wrong. Mm -hmm. Because communities actually know what development is. Mm -hmm. They know that they are living in a situation where getting water is a challenge. Mm -hmm. They do not have electricity, or mm -hmm. they have, but it goes off, on and off. Mm -hmm. Then they know that they do not have schools. Mm -hmm. They know that they do not have portable water. Mm -hmm. So they know what they have and what they don't have. Okay. Do you know the number of children who are in school and who mm -hmm. are at the basic level, secondary and tertiary level? You are able to tell number of people who have certain kind of skills mm -hmm. and they wish to have more. And that is why I can see that uh, no community ever gets satisfied with level of development. Okay. So you may appreciate and say, well, what we have, we appreciate what we have. But there will always be a need to get more to address certain areas. And that is the nature of development. Okay. You get one and you wish you have another okay. uh, to add. So in effect, yeah. the, the leadership must first of all ascertain the needs, the development needs of the communities. Uh, yeah. Before Absolutely. you can even provide the right leadership. The to, right leadership. To attain the development, the kind of development. Absolutely. That okay. is one way of looking at it. Okay. Yeah, the interest must be there. The focus is to get the community to be better off. But leadership, of course, will look at what is the interest of the people mm -hmm. and how can we work to achieve that interest. Okay. Because that is significant. But uh, if we leave it at that level, then mm -hmm. they will be struggling to find out who has to lead that mm -hmm. and what is leadership then. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not just limited to a very few people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just think that our religious leaders, we think that our traditional uh, leaders, or we think that influential social actors in our communities mm -hmm. are leaders or are supposed to be leaders and mm -hmm. for that matter demonstrate leadership. Mm -hmm. It is not always the case. Because if you look at leadership, it's just about uh, looking, identify what has to happen or not, ha or not, not. happen. Okay. Because if you identify that way, 
And then looking at how can I get that happen, or how can I get it mm -hmm. out of the way mm -hmm. so that my people will be better off? Okay. Because you just have to know the way. You must have. You just have to know. To show the way and know the way you know, and show the way. It, knowing it is not even enough okay. because you have to walk it. Okay. Because yeah, if sure. you know, you have to now just walk. You have to live it. You have to mm -hmm. demonstrate that you actually know the way okay. before you show others. Okay. And often when we are showing our, uh, others, we just stand from distance and then we say, this is what must happen. But that is not how we show the way. Okay. You walk the way with the people that you want to bring okay. about the change. Okay. And that is what is important. Okay. That is what leadership has to do. And it has to come from not just the people I talked about, I uh, mentioned earlier on mm -hmm. the chiefs. And, mm -hmm. No, we all have certain level of capacity to show leadership. Because change in a community can be incremental. Mm -hmm. It can just be gradual. The change you make in your community can't turn out to be the, just that thing that the community needs to have a bigger change. Mm -hmm. But if you are waiting for very few people to bring about change, it may elude you. Mm -hmm. And that is what we need to, people need to understand that when we are talking about leadership, it is not a preserve of a privileged few. Okay, you for sure. On this program, yeah. we have established that everybody within us, all humans, yeah. lies the capability to lead. Yeah. So harnessing those capabilities is very important. So you have equally hammered on those points. Yeah. Everybody must appreciate the fact that you have within you leadership qualities that yeah. you can utilize for yeah. the betterment of society now let's bring it back to the question yes. now in your the question of leading development on behalf of or in collaboration with communities or residents within a community what critical qualities should a leader exhibit you also mentioned you must show the way you must know the way you must show it by living it yeah. so what qualities should a leader or leaders community leaders exhibit anytime i ask this question i always say that a leader should be able to see very well in darkness mm -hmm. in darkness yes a leader should okay. be able to see very well she see very well in darkness you must because have long vision, vision. or clear vision yeah there are people who say oh this is dark we can't see anything really that you should be able to see something okay. in there mm -hmm. so if you are able to develop that capacity that when others are struggling to see things mm -hmm. then you are able to see analyze and get them to appreciate them so well, that means that it's not always the case that in as much as what people want maybe what they think is good for them yeah. the leader must go beyond what they want and also you know prescribe yeah. if you like something that will inure to their benefit is that the impression i'm getting yeah it's possible a leader people may be aiming at something mm -hmm. that because of your leadership you are mm -hmm. able to tell this is not good for my people okay how you communicate that is very important okay how you get the people to appreciate that yes this is not the thing that you should be looking for mm -hmm. it's very critical okay so it means that that first of all leadership mm -hmm. must have uh, must be must, must be visionary absolutely and then also how to communicate that vision, vision. because mm -hmm. it's not enough to have a vision mm -hmm. sure. how you communicate your vision, vision for me is very important okay. because you should be able to state your purpose clearly and explain well enough to get the, the people who are supposed to to be led mm -hmm. to be with you to understand why you want to go a particular way because yeah. if you have the vision and you are not able to communicate it then it's a uh, bad as not having it okay so having a vision is one thing and so it should be able to have clear vision Second, you should be able to communicate the vision. Mm -hmm. you should be able to mobilize resources around the vision. Okay. And then resources. So ability to mobilize. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You are able to mobilize resources in place of the, the vision. vision. Because and in talking about resources, sometimes people think that it's just about money. Money counts. But human 
beings. The human resource is critical. Okay. How many people do I need to achieve this vision? Mm-hmm. What kind of characteristics do they need to have? How inclusive can I be or should I be mm-hmm. in pursuit of the vision? Okay. Also critical. So it is not enough to just say, okay, I have the resources, but you have to examine that. Mm-hmm. The people you uh, need to be able to uh, get your vision mm-hmm. achieved. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, money is very important. Okay. You also need to, um, uh, to just uh, look at other platforms, sometimes mm-hmm. uh, talking about knowledge management. Mm-hmm. So it's not enough. The people, mm-hmm. good, uh, money, but you also need to knowledge management. Okay. Where do you go to fetch ideas? ideas. Where okay. do you go to reflect? Where do you go to explore? Mm-hmm. Because those things are very important. Because you need to uh, draw from previous experience. Mm-hmm. Some previous experience. What has happened in the past? I intend doing this. Have people done similar things or same thing? How did they do that? Okay. Where did they go wrong? You need to ask these questions. But mostly leaders, or there are a number of people who claim to be leading, but they suffer serious challenges because they do not create uh, platforms to reflect. Okay. They do not ask themselves critical questions. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And to be able to lead very well, you need a critical friend. And sometimes your mindset can be that critical friend. Just listening to the, the silent voices in your mind. That can also be a critical friend for you. Okay. And that is what is lacking in most cases. And because of that, uh, people have very uh, good vision. They are able to express their vision very well. But they are not able to even work, uh, have a journey towards achieving the vision okay. because of some of these things that I just talked about. Okay. So these are just about so being visionary, being able to communicate yeah. the vision, yeah. ability to mobilize resources, yeah. and ability to manage the knowledge. Absolutely. And also, you know, um, have critical... Yeah, have that critical, uh, what is it, friend. Friend yeah. that will speak to you Absolutely. so that you can make good judgments. Good judgments. Uh, some of the qualities that community leaders should have. Absolutely. In your pronouncement, you also mentioned about inclusiveness or inclusivity. How are leaders in your community work, you have been involved largely in community work, How should community leaders, community development leaders, you know, include or work to attain uh, inclusiveness? Yes, Uh, let me just share this story with you. In fact, uh, when I uh, co-founded NOSAC, Mm -hmm. and then the focus was just on youth, mobilizing youth around HIV AIDS. That was just the focus. Okay. I'm just just trying to answer your question on the inclusiveness. Okay and how that reflects in our communities. So there was this occasion we were analyzing vulnerability mm-hmm. and then we we're looking at uh, who is more susceptible to mm-hmm. uh, HIV mm-hmm. infection. Mm-hmm. Then our conclusion was that uh, women, mm-hmm. their biological makeup, mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. The, our cultural setting Mm -hmm. you know the rules they play Mm -hmm. at home in society consider all these factors Mm -hmm. and you find women to be at disadvantage Mm -hmm. so apart from the biological makeup Mm -hmm. which exposes them to infection these are the factors that i've talked about Mm -hmm. contribute Mm -hmm. so you know and i was just okay well even though we're talking about hiv should we not tilt towards a woman Mm -hmm. So it was quite easy for us to take a decision that NOSAC, even though we work with you, our focus is going to be the female. Mm-hmm. It's going to be women. Okay. We're going to take side with women. Okay. So we made a, a shift to work with you. Oh, and Douglas, we have taken side with women. Okay. So politically, we are for women. Mm-hmm. And we became one of the best gender uh, focus organizations in the country. Okay, so so in effect, what you're trying to say is that to be to to attain inclusivity, one should conduct some kind of critical analysis Absolutely. of what the development need is, yeah. and determine the 
key focus areas yeah. or or stakeholders yeah. so that you can include them in your mission or focus on them. Yes. That's that's what you Absolutely. said. You are right. You know the context must influence you. Okay. Where am I having this intervention? Okay. Who and who live here? Okay. What are their differences? Okay. You see, so yes, you have men, you have women, you have boys, you have girls. You understand? So you have uh, the young and then the, uh, what is it, the elderly. Mm -hmm. So how do you bring the needs of these people, mm -hmm. you understand? Together. Together. Okay. And be able to move with all of them. Okay. Be able to come up with interventions that would benefit yeah, all of them part. and not just very few people. Okay. So that you just don't become skewed no. to just one side and yeah. leaving the other yeah, side. The other side. Okay. No. So on the screen is some of the works that your your team has been conducting. Yeah. Um, can you just uh, pass on a few comments on some of the the pictures on the screen for yeah. us? Yeah. So it's like some of these things, he's talking about community leadership. Mm -hmm. So, we are, how do we get the community to be at the center of leadership? Okay. So if even if you have an intervention that you're going to a community, you allow you build capacity of people in the mm -hmm. community to take up the initiative and run with it. Okay. Instead of still having NOSAC, for example, going to mobilize communities mm -hmm. and say so we are bringing this uh, intervention, mm -hmm. who want to get your ideas and all that. No. Engage and hand over to the community. So what we see on the screen, uh, the gentleman is a community member. Member. And, and this is, well, this is mm -hmm. just about one of our uh, security interventions. We have okay. peace and then so we are able to train some community and build some, com some community structures mm -hmm. and get community leaders to lead uh, sensitization, to lead the education process. Okay. They have uh, uh, similar or same uh, uh, characteristics, so they are able to understand each other and speak to certain uh, okay. uh, issues. So that is exactly uh, so that you find one of them. Those community leaders are the able to speak the, the same language, language. The language that people okay. understand. They are able to get their expressions mm -hmm. and which uh, those expressions they are able to tell whether they, they are getting them right or not. But if you come from uh, somewhere, you build, oh, I'm bringing you uh, information on this, I'm coming to empower you and all that. Uh, yes, uh, the guest just may be telling you something that you, you will hardly notice. There may be an issue of suspicion and mistrust as well. Yeah, yes. And then, the, in fact, you leave with whatever that you brought to the people. You leave with that. So because sustainability would have been uh, lost, lost from the onset. It would have been lost from the onset. All right, cherished viewers, I'm learning a lot. Uh, it's not just about community development being determined from elsewhere and sending down to the communities that need those developments or uh, supposed development. It's about also including or involving the residents or the members of that community in the planning process, in the execution process, so that they play a critical role in their own development agenda. Yeah. That is basically what we have been discussing yeah. so far. I've, I've, I've learned a lot, and I believe you are also learning. This program is live on Facebook at Metro TV Ghana and on DSTV channel 277 as we speak, and also on VOL online radio. We're going to open the phone lines soon, and you have the opportunity to contribute to the program. Let's take our first uh, break and then we, we shall continue the conversation. Are you looking for an excellent professional risk management and training solutions provider? Look no further. Your ultimate solution provider is here at V5 Solutions Limited. We support you with our professional skills in building capacity of your teams and managing all your operational risks. Our best bespoke solutions include private and corporate security risk management and training fraud investigation, occupational safety and health management and training, project monitoring, evaluation and research, supply of private security, logistics equipment. Our solutions are professionally delivered 
with in-depth focus on people, processes and procedures, the environment and ultra-modern technology. Contact us now on 0303-957136 and 053-5176615 or send us an email at info at v5solutionslimited.com for a partnership that strengthens a company for an excellent sustainable productivity and profitability. Visit our website at www.v5solutionslimited.com for more details. V5 Solutions Limited, your ultimate professional risk management and training hub. Welcome back, cherished viewers and listeners. This is Leadership 360 live on Metro TV, DSTV channel 277, and live on Facebook at Metro TV Ghana, and on viewer online radio as well. Our topic for discussion this afternoon has been community development leadership, and we have been talking to Mr. Mohamed Awal Alassan, Executive Director of NOSAC. Yes, yeah. an NGO operating in the northern sector of Ghana. He has taken us through a couple of things that has been very insightful, yeah. talking about how leaders must appreciate the needs of the people, must also identify critical stakeholders, and also be able to you know, engage the people in the process. Yeah. Now, my next question, which I believe is on the minds of most of our viewers and mm. listeners, is that, is there not a need to empower the individuals to identify and execute their own development needs, do we have to necessarily get people from uh, organizations like yours okay. to be always available to lead them in the process? Yeah, I think you know, often what you hear either from government or NGOs is that mm -hmm. we have secured X amount of money mm -hmm. to empower communities. Mm -hmm. To empower citizens and so empowerment. I, say, I sometimes I make a joke that uh, one of the words over or should I even say overuse mm -hmm. uh, is uh, empowerment. Mm -hmm. We have used empowerment, empowerment. Unfortunately, the people that uh, we see we are empowering, I'm not sure we are able to establish the extent to which we have empowered them. Right. So I'm just saying this just to let you know that the intention is always to get the people and get the communities okay. better. Okay. And so empowerment at individual level mm -hmm. and also at group level. Group level, okay. We have done a lot at the individual level. Mm -hmm. And even at the group level, we can still have like smaller groups, mm -hmm. but how we are able to, uh, what is it, connect mm -hmm. those smaller groups mm -hmm. and make them have collective power mm -hmm. to be able to influence for chi is what is lacking at the moment. Okay. But in terms of like individual level, we find you go to most of the communities, you are able to tell a number of people who have uh, uh, improved their academic, uh, what is it, journey, mm -hmm. those who have been able to get a certain level of exposure, mm -hmm. and those who are able to just speak out, identify some challenges and be able to speak to those challenges. Mm -hmm. But what we have not done well is uh, connecting this individual empowerment mm -hmm. to have collective power. Okay. And that is something that we need to focus on. Okay. And collective power may not just be um, having it in one community, mm -hmm. but if you look at community, like the typical sense of the word community, mm -hmm. as we all know yeah, it exactly. and have experienced it, but how do you connect communities? Mm -hmm. So okay. that uh, communities know that, uh, look, they have certain level of resources, but they are only able to just bring the desired change if they do not connect with others okay. or other people having uh, similar situations. So they, could, they can have a concerted effort Ab absolutely. To, 
to, to, to move forward together? Yeah, because there's strength in numbers. Okay. You see, so, and uh, most of the people we deal with are politicians, and politicians are uncomfortable uh, when numbers are for something or against something, you know. They get uh, uncomfortable. So if communities are able to uh, use... Why should they get uncomfortable? Oh, yes, politicians, uh, they have fairly uh, get uncomfortable when they do that because they know that uh, uh, the more power citizens have, the less power. Okay, they, we'll, we'll revisit yes, that. Please the, just You know, continue. the less power they mm -hmm. have. So uh, those things <laughs> will continue to, uh, to exist. But it's important that uh, as we empower communities, either government or NGOs, uh, we let them appreciate that they are not just experiencing those situations uh, alone, mm -hmm. but there are other communities who have similar things and they need to connect okay and that is what i'm just talking about the collective power okay. so it's important because a number of us have tried to look at uh, uh, gaps that exist in mm -hmm. some communities okay. but before you talk about the empowerment you must look at the gaps okay what is lacking in this community you're mm -hmm. coming to fill a gap. gap but if you don't know what a gap is it will be difficult for you to uh, to fill that okay but most of us we just run in the and name of you. empowerment so the specific areas that we have to touch on, and we miss out on okay. those, and then it becomes difficult for us. And also... Okay, before you, you bring the second point, yeah. I want participation from our viewers today, early enough, so, okay. so that we can have more questions answered. So the phone lines are open, 0531 982298. 0531 This is Leadership360. If you are out of the shores of Ghana or Africa or anywhere on the globe, just add plus 233 and you will reach us. We are waiting for your calls. So, Mr. Wow. Yeah, the second part I was just talking about, most of us treating empowerment as if it's an event. Okay. But that mm -hmm. is not the case. It's, a, actually, it's a continuous okay. kind of thing. So, you work with people, get to a particular level, you continue to assess again. So that's why assessment at this stage is very important. You assess mm -hmm. and you, you, uh, you, you, you note gaps mm -hmm. and then uh, okay. develop new interventions right. to address them. Like okay. I told you, our yeah. viewers are already calling in. Mohamed, yeah. good afternoon from Tamale. Good, good afternoon, sir. And your guest, Mohamed. Your name's sake. And you, uh, my name is Mohammed Sadiq, Abubakar Sadiq. Yes, I'm saying your, your namesake, Mohammed, is on the show uh, yeah, yes, this yes, afternoon. Yes, yes. Please go ahead with <laughs> your point. So, yeah, uh, I'm glad that you, uh, we, uh, we, today we, uh, we are discussing community development. And actually, you know, Mohammed knows that when we talk of community entries and entrance, or community entry, you know the is mean, and then he knows the community uh, opinion leader, the role of opinion leader leaders in in the, in the, uh, in the development of communities. And I will just give example of the district assembly. Okay. The district assemblies are the are the are, were considered at the national level. And then in the community development, he knows uh, religion doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't, uh, it shouldn't be too religious, it shouldn't be tribalist, uh, tribalistic, it shouldn't be partisan, and so on. And that was why the said district assembly should not, because in the community development, you will need everybody contributing. And then those who matter, that the, uh, uh, those who matter, who have certain qualities, which you cannot do without. And then that is why we are mentioning one name, the, the, uh, uh, the opinion leader okay. in the community. He plays a greater role, and he's having certain qualities, which the community members don't have, and they cannot do without that. So I'm very happy that... Uh, you are discussing this program. This program is, he knows it. It's a very difficult, uh, difficult to reach areas and so on. Doctor, you realize that in Ghana, that is the problem we are facing. We are, you, are, you are saying these assemblies are not functioning. Because the, uh, the current entrance of the district assemblies are not, uh, what, are not uh, on, based on skills. 
So just like what he, he said, they left, they left the one third for the district assembly. They one third that the, uh, the, the government to appoint to the district assembly is to get the skillful workers who will lead the uh, individual branches in their communities. Something like health, okay. something like community development uh, officer, and so on. They the one third. It's only a politician who came and changed the one third to their supporters. Are you getting me? Okay. So they should have been, they are the, those they will incorporate uh, into the, your community development. All right. So that is why, we are, so I, I, I will leave it here because, and I, the other time I sent a message to you, Dr. Victor, that if you, if you could uh, liaise with your authorities so that you increase the, the time, the period of, uh, uh, instead of one hour, they show that they will make it two hours for us. Because <laughs> it is a lot, in, uh, it involves a lot. So, and they show that the, uh, those communities and the, where we, the contributors, will okay. also and All right. most Ghanaian will con also contribute to your program. Dr. Howard, thank you. Good, uh, good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon once again. Thank you very much, Mohamed. Um, indeed, your, your, your request, we are looking at it, and in due course, mm. we will address it. Uh, thanks for your contribution. So, yeah. any comments? Well, I th uh, we, we thank Mohamed for uh, bringing the, this up. But uh, you know, like I was saying, community uh, development, I was mm -hmm. talking about the fact that it, it's not an event, mm -hmm. it's a continuous change, yeah. and we always have to pause and reflect. Mm -hmm. So any intervention you bring up, you have mm -hmm. to pause and reflect. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing that most leaders don't do. Okay. It's important that uh, you pause and reflect. And when you do that, you, you certainly will come out with uh, new uh, strategies. Okay. Right. So just like post projects, um, review absolutely to 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 you know ascertain whether the impact the desired impact has been achieved or not. Oh, no, yes, yeah, because uh, you know tracking. Okay, just just yes. let's uh, answer um, this call. Uh, first, being from Tamale. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Welcome to Leadership Tracy. Your point, please. Yes, thank you. I just want to also add my voice more. Okay. No, it's a very, very sensitive topic that you are discussing mm -hmm. concerning. Hello? Hello? Oh, sorry, we have lost him. Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Moment. Yeah, well, I think. Uh, Please call back. We, want, we are interested in hearing from you. Yes. So, we're just talking about tracking. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. it's also one of the ways. Uh, uh, that you are able to give yourself some level of um, encouragement. Mm -hmm. Because once you have established a vision mm -hmm. and uh, you are able to mobilize the resources, you are able to get the right team mm -hmm. to be able to pursue that vision, mm -hmm. it's important that you have a system to track progress mm -hmm. that you are making. When you track and then mm -hmm. you realize that you are making some progress, it mm -hmm. gives you some kind of encouragement. encouragement. And then you are able to... Uh, um, to keep going. Okay. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to communicate. You'll be able to tell others that uh, where you started mm -hmm. and where you have reached. Because it's important that you are able to look at okay. uh, uh, your start point oh, and right. then uh, some kind of okay. uh, uh, gains that you are making uh, in your journey. Journey as well. Okay. So, you see, from Tamale, good afternoon once again. Good afternoon, my wonderful host. Good afternoon, doctor. How are you, please? I'm fine, thank you. I hope you are fine, too. By the grace of God, I'm doing well. Let me say good afternoon to you, your viewers, and then uh, your guests in the studio. All the right, topic please. you are discussing is a very wonderful topic. Please go ahead with your point, please. Yes. Please, there's a, a point, Doc, made, uh, that your guests made mention of when it comes to community development. Most of the time, I've observed community. Hello? Yeah, please go ahead. You are, you yes, are I've observed community development programs and community development issues in Tamale. And most often than not, like what your guest was saying, when a development program is imposed in the people in the community by aliens or people who claim to have the facts from somewhere, 
it becomes difficult to sit in well with the community people. Mm -hmm. But when the people in the community themselves mm -hmm. are given the mandate to get involved in the process, and they are given the knowledge to transfer to their people, it is easy to sit in down well with the people because their language, their everything is done by their own people. Most of it are not. When some developers go, sometimes because of the elite nature of the people, mm -hmm. the community people who are supposed to get a development find it difficult to get closely interacted with them okay. and it keep them apart. But when the knowledge is transferred to the local people mm -hmm. and they, are, they in turn give it to their own people, I think it sits well with them. Okay. As I speak, I'm a student of community development okay. from UDS. I'm doing development. That's good. So the topic is my dear to my heart. That is why I'm contributing. I had to contribute to radio programs. But that program is dear to my heart. Especially, you show a picture where a man is talking to the community people in the classroom. Mm -hmm. It is not an imposition. That means the people will have time to listen to their own and it was, the message will sit down well with them. Okay. Then when the elite, who is supposed to come from the big towns and the big cities, come and they are sometimes, they are attacked alone, they even wear, scarce more than to come around them. Okay. But when the knowledge is transferred to the community people and they put it to them, to their people. Okay. So from Yusuf, he's also educating us that we should appreciate the cultural sensitivities that are you know, uh, evident in the, in the local communities yeah. when we are executing development um, uh, leadership uh, projects. Your comments? Yeah, I, I think this, uh, that's a good intervention. And mm -hmm. I he's a student of uh, community development, development, so mm -hmm. he should be able to just uh, um, appreciate some of the, uh, the challenges yes. uh, we have uh, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, empowering and sustaining development mm -hmm. in, uh, in our communities. So, uh, so uh, just like he said, and then uh, perhaps also moving forward with it, I just think that uh, we need to find ways mm -hmm. of uh, redefining how we work in these communities. In these communities. The, talking about how redefining mm -hmm. how work is done within the communities, yeah. uh, if my producer, if I, my producer will permit me, or if the video is available, can we uh, have a look? at some of the activities uh, uh, relating to community engagement yeah. um, where uh, some if it's not available um, we can continue the discussion yeah, but for me it is community engagement yeah All so right. like so, so if you can just yeah so for example if you look at this so that you find uh, especially now one mm -hmm. of the approaches that we use and i think it's also reflecting here mm -hmm. all called like safe spaces okay how do you create a platform for either young girls, mm -hmm. the community, mm -hmm. to mobilize, identify where to meet, mm -hmm. where to discuss their own issues, how to plan um, and execute uh, okay. their own activities? Okay. So, is this some term. kind of simulation? Yes, that I mean, is being done, done by the community. By the community. By the community. So, it's one yeah. of the ways of engaging. Okay. So, when before they do this, they would have gone through uh, some kind of message development. They would have um, been sent to a particular... Okay, while this is going on, yeah. James, good afternoon. Good Rob afternoon, sir. East. Good afternoon, James. Good afternoon. Please, you're welcome to Leadership Resistance. Your point, please. Thank you very much. And then uh, thank you to uh, Dr. Before You. I'm so, so, so happy with his, uh, uh, his uh, message. Especially anything community development is always uh, at uh, the, the core of my heart. And then having listened to him, especially where he stated that leaders sometimes they fail because they don't allow a critical friend to speak to them. And your own self, your own inner being mm -hmm. can tend to be your critical friend. I think if we had people just like Doc seated before you, that could actually take up the mantle of this nation, we would have been far ahead. Because as a good leader, you must have something we call the critical friend. And the critical friend must not be a friend who tells you every good thing about you. But the critical friend sometimes 
intends to give you certain critics to straighten you or to shape in your way of doing things. So if we have these caliber of people in society taking up the mantle of leadership of this nation, I think it would have been very far because you have to sit down at a point, reflect, and then look at so far how I have come and where am I going? Are we headed towards the right direction? So anything that has to do with community development that I know must always be given a listening ear. Without that, you will tumble. So we are very much grateful to him, and then we continue to follow, follow his footsteps. And whatever he, wherever he is, we are always glued to listen to, to them and to see how best we can shape in a society in terms of development. Good afternoon, and thank you very much. Thank you very much for your great contribution. Us too soon, time is uh, up. Uh, yeah. I want to <laughs> say uh, it's about time you, you just um, uh, give us just some general commentary and then we end it. But before you do that, on this program we have what we call the leadership honor code. Mm -hmm. So let's take a quick look at our honor code and when we uh, listen to it, when we come back, then you, we, we, you have your closing remarks. proud and firm African. I will take a stand. I will lead and be the change. Come and take my hand. For the safety, honor, and welfare of my country and company come first. Always and every time. The honor, welfare, and comfort of the people I lead come next. My own ease, comfort, and safety come last, always and every time. Welcome back. Today has been amazing. I will not speak much. I will give the, the time to Mr. Mohammed to wrap up for us. Yeah, thank you very much. I think talking about community um, leadership mm -hmm. and using leadership to promote community development, mm -hmm. there must be a shift. Mm -hmm. We have done it in a particular way for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it's high time we started doing things uh, differently. And I think that uh, one key thing that I want to raise here mm -hmm. is to help everybody in the community mm -hmm do what I call, you define your purpose. Okay. Why am I here? here? Define your purpose. Mm -hmm. If we are able to have a number of people defining their purpose, and we are lucky enough to have that in the same way, the community overall mm -hmm. uh, um, we'll purpose, I tell you, will be able to promote okay. development. But there is something I always I say, well, I, I say stuckness. We are stuck in our current situation because we are having difficulty in learning. And if on we learning. Are, yes, if we are not able to unlearn, it, in fact, it will be difficult for us to learn. Okay. Because there won't be space. That's why we say on this program, we have to learn. Um, on learn okay. and relearn in yeah. order to accelerate Absolutely. our then, development process. Yeah, I'm happy you have that. Uh, yeah, yes. I'm happy you have that because that is what we have to do. Okay. We have to just make way right. for new learning, new ways okay. of doing things. For oh, sure, they get so better. on Thank that you note, very much. we have to define our purposes yeah. as individuals or yeah. our purpose as individuals, yeah. and then also have the ability to unlearn yeah. so as to relearn yeah. so that we can accelerate our development mm -hmm. agenda. Thank you. It's been nice having you. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Mohamed you very much, Alassan. Yeah, Doc. Yeah. And uh, yeah. viewers, on this note, yeah. it's been pleasant having you around. We have discussed the topic community development leadership. Amazing lessons that we have learned. Involvement of the local uh, community members, the residents within a community, is the best way to, you know, uh, execute any development agenda in there. Thank you very much. And this recording of this show is on Facebook and it's on YouTube as well. You can watch other previous episodes. 
and I use the opportunity to wish all of us a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year ahead as we all, you know, journey into the 2024. See you next week.